you can add and modify beautiful real-time environmental effects in our rodeo with weather. Here's how. We'll show you how to add a weather effect, change an effect settings, constrain an effects boundary, and use effects creatively. Before you start, you'll need to open a room in your Owlbear Rodeo account and install and enable the weather extension in that room. First, let's add a weather effect. A weather effect can be added to any item that's on the map layer, so let's start by applying one to our whole battle map. Usually, maps are locked by default, allowing you to grab and pan the whole scene around without moving the map underneath any of the tokens. So to select the map, I double click on it. Now that the map is selected, I open up its overflow menu by clicking on the three dot button in its toolbar, then I can see the option to add weather. As soon as I select that option, I see the default settings that apply a gentle snowfall effect to the whole area of this battle map, and I also see the four weather parameters. Next, let's change an effect settings. Within the overflow menu for a map item that has a weather effect applied, the condition drop-down menu allows you to select from six different environmental effects – snow, rain, sand, fire, cloud and bloom. We'll take a look at each of these later, but for now we'll pick the fire effect to match this lava-filled location. The direction drop-down menu allows you to choose in which direction the weather is heading, offering the eight points of the compass, both cardinal and ordinal directions, running clockwise from north all the way through to northwest. Changing the direction will jump the effect algorithm to that new heading immediately. The two remaining weather parameters have four options each, presented as buttons that increase in intensity from left to right. The wind parameter lets you choose how quickly the weather is progressing across the map, from a gentle breeze to a raging gale. And the cover option allows you to choose how much the environmental effect covers the map. Note that for some of the different conditions, the left-hand pair of cover buttons only increase the primary particles like snowflakes, raindrops and embers, while the right-hand pair of buttons also add a secondary vapour-like effect such as clouds or plasma, as seen in this side-by-side -side comparison. Now, we'll constrain an effects boundary. Adding a weather effect that covers a whole map may be ideal for a particular location, but sometimes you want to constrain the effect to a smaller part of the map, so let's see how to do that. Because an effect can be added to any item that's on the map layer, we can use the drawing tools to define an area and then apply the weather effect to that shape. Let's say that I want some eerie fog inside this building, but I'd like to keep the outside clear. I can make several shapes with the drawing tools, which cover the central space inside, Then I can select them all and use the Join feature to make them into one complex shape. You could, of course, achieve the same effect by using the Drawing Brush or Polygon tools to draw that perimeter in a single shape, so it's up to you to decide which method you prefer. Next, I'll move that complex shape to the map layer and add weather to it, choosing slow, thick clouds that are heading southwards. Of course, we could also do the reverse, effectively cutting out an area where we don't want to have an effect applied. For example, rain falling inside a building that has an intact roof would be slightly odd. So let's see how that would work with this same map. I'll add another drawn shape that's large enough to cover the whole map, move it to the map layer, and then I'll pull it to the side so that you can see the next step clearly. I'll select the drawing of the building's interior that has the cloud effect applied and place that on top of the large rectangle I just drew. Then select both of them, clicking on the three dot button to access the overflow toolbar's trim function. This will cut the shape of the upper drawing from the lower one. Now, when I move the cloud effect back onto the battle map, I can see that there's a hole of the same shape in the middle of my large rectangle, particularly visible when I give the shape a little fill. So that when I add weather to it, that cutout in the middle is excluded from the effect. Moving the second drawn shape into position, I can now select both drawings with the Drawing Grab tool, and finally I'll make sure that these shapes have 0% opacity for their fill and stroke parameters, 
so that they disappear while leaving the two weather effects visible inside and outside of the building. If I need to select them again, I can use the draw and grab tool to marquee around them, or I could use a tool like the outliner extension to select them from the list of items within the scene. If you want to fine tune the shape, the edit path option will allow you to add, reposition, or remove points along that shape's edge. Finally, let's use effects creatively. Occasionally you'll come across a map that was made for weather effects, or which would benefit from using weather in an unconventional way. This first map is an example of multiple weather effects adding to the visual impact of the location. I've applied all six different condition effects here, added onto drawn shapes that match the specific contours of those rooms, which enhance and animate the static artwork of the map. However, you can also use weather to add new elements to a map that are more than just environmental effects, but could instead be structures or features that your players can exploit to achieve their goals. For example, in this map there's a central chasm that the players aren't easily able to cross, so they have a choice between taking their chances fighting through unknown hordes of enemies in the side passageways, or correctly deciphering the arcane bridge controls, which will cause a beam of magical energy to span the gap. All you need to do is unhide the drawing that has this animated effect on it. Likewise, in this case, the party could work out how to manipulate the Dwarven Furnaces to create a thermal updraft strong enough to lift them to the next level. Alternatively, if you have ice or fire creatures with an area of effect around them, you can create a weather aura that you attach the token, so that the range of this effect is seen in all its dynamic, animated glory. The weather extension offers you more than 750 possible combinations of its parameters, and almost limitless ways to apply them in your scenes, so let your imagination run wild. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe on YouTube, or click another video to keep watching.